Hi everyone, uh, Dimple here again welcoming you all to today's session on Android Framework Components. Today we will see what are the uh, different ways in which we can label a service. So let's get started. Uh, basically there are three different types you can label a service. First one is by defining automated transition policy. Second one is using a sec label option in init.target.rc file. And the third one is by defining it in the service context uh, so if you are writing the core service or native service always the first option is preferred that is by defining in the transition policy and um, if you are uh, launching your uh, service via a shell or if you are writing it as a root then the second or third option are preferred so let's go in detail uh, for each of these. Labeling a service via transition. One important thing we have to make notice when we are trying to label a service via transition, we have to have uh, these two files uh, mandatorily. One is uh, the service.te file where we define our policies and the another is a file context file okay so here i have taken an example of creating a service of super service dot te and i'm creating that service under the folder device and oem that is your uh, company specific folder and common se policy and i'm defined a super service dot te for this super service dot te i'm executing in the domain okay so um Whenever um, super service uh, wants to run in a unique domain called super service and when we run as a domain we will have lots and lots of privileges and two things I'm using here is exec and the type. So I am telling that my super service has to run in the exec type itself. I'm defining my super service as the exec type only and and my file type also I'm defining. So tomorrow if I come back and if I want to access this particular super service, I have to have the super service underscore exec privileges. Only then I will be able to access this particular super service. If I don't have the super service exec privileges, then I'll not be able to access this particular super service. So here I have defined super service .te file and also I have defined the file context and in the file context uh, this just I am specifying my file context as super service underscore exec. So this is the context under which my super service will run and these two things I have to make changes in my android.mk file. So android.mk file is again present under the same directory. So all these three different files are present under the same directory device oem common sc policy. Uh, so under uh, board SC policy directory and SC policy union directory, I'm just adding these two files, whatever I have created. So these are the uh, steps. So if you want to do via transition, you have to create your own .te file. You have to create uh, define the uh, type, whatever you uh, define here in the .te file that you have to specify and mention in your file context. And both of these you have to add in android.mk file. Uh, next, uh, we'll see an example for labeling a service via sec label. So labeling a service via sec label is also uh, similar to the previous one, but there is one um, extra step because this service will be uh, started uh, or it can be run as a root or you're running it as a, a shell script. You have to add that in init.target.rc example your under device oem product uh, that is based on your specific device sc policy init target dot rc here i have taken an example of hardware config service so hardware config uh, service is nothing but it's a uh, vendor related and hardware interface related it will have different hardware uh, configurations uh, like camera driver running under hardware config all the hardware related stuff will be under this defined under this hardware config so for this this particular service um, we are running it under uh, we are defining it under init.target.rc 
and um, we want to run it under the vendor underscore init context. I'm defining the context where I want to run this particular hardware dot config service. So in init dot target dot rc file, I'm labeling the service and I'm defining the context where it has to run. Then comes the te file where I define the domain. Okay, so. Um, here I'm defining the type as hardware config domain and I'm writing an SE policy to allow that hardware config domain followed by the file type, the class and the permission. And later what I do, these two files I need to add in my android.mk file, which is similar as earlier. Uh, so why this extra step in it dot target dot rc uh, because uh, uh, labeling and starting the service the service will be started as part of this uh, device boot up right so that's why we need to add here if we are using via sec label so few core important services we will add under in it dot target dot rc next we will see labeling a, a service via service context so a uh, service context what you have to do is you have to just define the context for example here i have my own service abc underscore youtube and i have defined a context for that service abc youtube underscore service so this is my context and i just write it in the service dot uh, underscore context files so uh, this service dot context when to uh, use when to label a service using this service context is that uh, in previous slide, we want to label a service as sec label when we want the service uh, to start from shell. Okay, that is when we include it in init.rc. So it is, if it is okay for a, a service to start when the kernel is up, after the kernel is up, if it's uh, okay to start a service, then we can add such services under service.context. Along with the kernel, if we want to start a service that time we need to add as a sec label so few uh, secondary services which is okay to start when the kernel is up that time we can use it under service context so these are the three different ways uh, via transition this is the normal preferred way for the services uh, for sec label if we are uh, want to uh, if we are looking to start a service uh, when the device boots up that time we write sec label if it's okay to start a service after the kernel is up that time we use uh, a service context uh, then we'll see what are the different ways of labeling the apps. We can label apps by adding in Mac underscore permissions dot XML and SE app context. So these are the different types of app categories defined system app by platform UID system app by certificates. There are other apps isolated apps and there are vendor or OEM specific apps original equipment manufacturer specific apps. These are the customized apps. So one small snippet of how we can uh, write is uh, under this Mac underscore permission dot XML. It will be in this particular format. So signature will be the platform. So if I'm using a platform application, signature will be a platform and some value I have to give your essay info value. This is how we label the apps. A small snippet I have shown here. Next we'll see essay Linux denial example. So we saw the three different types of labeling and we saw a small snippet of how uh, apps are labeled. Next we'll see a denial example. Here I have an error. Okay. So AVC denied NL message underscore right. So this is the permission. That means I'm not having the right permission for com is equal to IP and the source context is defined as untrusted app and the target context is also untrusted app. The class which the source is trying to access is netlink root socket. So this is the error from this error. What we understand is that untrusted app attempted to write netlink source socket. So this is a source, right? So source and context are both untrusted app source, which is untrusted app is trying to access the class in the target and the class name in the target context is netlink root socket 
why this source is not allowed to access the T class that is netlink root socket because the source do not have the right permission got it this is how we need to predict so this is uh, the format in which the error will be thrown uh, so we have to understand this source which is nothing but untrusted app is trying to access uh, this netlink root socket but it is not able to access because it is denied of this right permission to allow the source to access this class then we have to add this line in the te file we have to add this policy in the dot te file we know in dot te file we write the policies right so what is the policy you will write allow what is the source which is trying to access untrusted app that is the name of the source right and self why i write is because the source uh, and the target both are having the same name that's the reason i write the self followed by what is the class this is the type of self followed by what class i'm trying to access here i'm trying to access netlink root socket and what is the permission i'm not given permission is write permission this can be anything read write execute permission or any permission for that matter so it's very easy to write a policy right so why we write policy i hope you understood now so in this untrusted app dot te file if this line did not exist this message will be thrown this error message will be thrown how to overcome this error message you have to add this line in this untrusted app.te file so i'll come again allow and this is the source i'm writing itself because source and context both are same and which class i'm trying to access which class the source is trying to access netlink root socket followed by what is the permission which i am denied from this line is the policy which i should add in this untrusted app.te file so every uh, every um, service will have its own te file where we define the policies i hope this example is helpful and uh, i hope it's clear to everyone uh, with that we'll come to end of today's uh, session and today's question is very simple what is the extension of the file where all the se linux policies are written it's the file name dot te so the extension is dot te uh yeah that's it i had for today uh here in this today session i explained uh, avc denial error followed by how to overcome that particular error and we also saw the different types of labeling a service uh in my next session i think i'll show you all a practical example of uh, how avc denial is thrown and how to handle that in the source code so enough of theory classes in my next session i'm thinking of doing some thing with practical exposure uh, so stay tuned with my upcoming uh, videos i'll see you all soon in my next session until then everyone take care bye